Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're to go over where the market is, where we think the market's going in the coming weeks. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader and you're new here, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures, which is S&P 500 futures and the NASDAQ futures. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. And without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at ES right now on the daily chart. And I have two things written out right here. Right off the bat, first thing is the 4,000 to 4020 target by June 8th based on the DJT divergence and 4060 ES by May 30th based on HYG divergence. So I wanna go over those two divergences in this video. So make sure you stay all the way to the end of the, and to see the reasons why I believe that we are gonna fall about 4% from the highs that we made on Friday in the coming seven to 20 days. Friday, we made a high, put in a topping candle here, hit a high about 42.27 on ES, and the low was down at 41.91. We had Jerome Powell speaking. I was actually on a vacation this past week, just coming back to it, but I kept an eye on the charts and everything. Everything looked good to hold shorts. I've been saying in the previous videos that I thought we would target this 42.10 high from February. Now that we have that, I can feel much more confident that there's no more liquidity to grab to the upside because this was major liquidity. 42.10 was is a lot of stops. So why not run it above 42.10 before going lower? And there's a lot of reasons pointing to why we will likely gravitate lower fairly quickly in this coming one to two weeks. So let's dive into those reasons. So. Basically, the first thing is DJT. So DJT is are the Dow transports, and every time Dow transports sell off aggressively while US 30, the entire Dow, drifts up, once we find a top, it can last one week, it can last two weeks, it can last one month, or sometimes up to two months. Right now, we're just over two months of a divergence, going from March 6th to about May 18th, and you'll see I drew this line here because we've just been going down. So we've, we've actually went down about 9% from those those two times, as you see on the close of Friday, we went down 9% over two months on DJT. And then if you go to US 30, on US 30 from March 6th to today, we're flat on US 30 while the Dow transports are down 9%, right? That's over a two month span. So remember those numbers. Now let's go over to another time when this occurred, and this is actually at the all-time high that we made back in 2021. So I'm just gonna go back to 2021 here. You'll see that from November 2nd to January 4th, we went down from the high to that date. We went down 9% over a span of two months, right? So November 2nd to January 4th, we went down 9% from the high up here to here, just like we did now this past time. And then on the US 30, and then on the US 30, from November 2nd to January 4th, we went up. So we've been going up this whole time, just like we have right now, where we've been going up on US 30 while Dow Transports went off down 9%. So if we just take a look at those two dates on the SPX, you'll see something very similar. November 2nd is right where my mouse is, and then January 4th is right there. From those two dates, we went up about 3.5% over two months, while Dow Transports went down 9%. So now let's take a look at where we currently have, because that was the all time high. So remember last time Dow transports went down 9% over two, a two month span while the SPX actually went up three and a half percent. Same idea right now from March 6th, March 6th would be right where my mouse is here. We went up 3.9% over a two and a half month span where DJT went down 9%. So these two periods are essentially identical in the time of the divergence and the strength of the di di divergence. Both times DJT went down 9%, both times SPX went up about 3.5% and it lasted about two months. Then you see, okay, well, what happened after the high? Here is the top for SPX. And this is the end of the DJT divergence when we did top and we sold off. Well, let's see how fast we sold off and how much we sold off. So basically from the high, January 4th, in about seven days, right there, seven days, we sold off 4.9%. By the time it was about 20 days, we had sold off 12% from the high. So we sold off 12% in 20 days, and we sold off 4.9% in seven days. Now, I don't think it's gonna be that fast in this case, but 
I just wanted you to see what I'm looking at and where I'm seeing these divergences play out. And when they do play out and they finish and they top, that's kind of something we can look like look at in the ballpark. So again, 4.9% in seven days and 12% in 20 days. So we can take a look at what I think we will see in a moment. But basically, as I'm going along here, all these lines are DJT divergences. So these are times where SPX rallied and the Dow Transport sold off and HYG was selling off as these rallies. So they see all these divergences, big sell-offs, quick rapid sell-offs have followed. And basically it averaged about three and a half to four and a half percent sell-off in the first seven days. And then a, about a 6% sell-off on average uh, after about 20 days. This was the top. If this was the end of that divergence, then in the next seven days, we would sell off about 3.9. In that other case, it was 4.9%. That would bring us down to 4,010 on SPX. So let's take a look at what that might look like on ES Futures. So ES Futures, if we did sell off 4.8%, percent again that would bring us to 40 20 on es just in seven days though so that's talking 40 20 by the end of may again i don't think it's gonna be that fast what i back tested was on average from all the previous divergences it's typically about three and a half percent or four percent so if we go three and a half percent in seven days that's how we could see about 40 80 on es at some point by the end of may that i really am leaning towards 40 80 but possible is this fair value gap here, 4050. If we sell up 4% and we go down to about 4050, 4055, maybe 4060 by May 30th. So, you know, we see this 4060 target May 30th based on HYG. I think we'll trade down there at some point just to sweep these recent lows before the month ends. That's what I have the most conviction in. And as you see, my stop is just above this recent high at 4227. Now that we put that in, the stop is 80 points away. Uh, average is 41.50 short. I did get some ads at 42.20, and I'm fully in my short 41.50 average. Yes, is at 4200 right now. You know, I am in about 50 point drawdown currently, and target is uh, about 40.20, so we're looking at about 130 points of t my target to the downside. And I think, yeah, I think we'll hit that by June 8th based on DJT. If we had the same scenario that happened with the top of January 2021, that was a 12% sell off in 20 days. That would literally put us all the way down to 37.20 by June 8th. That's how fast of a sell-off we had from January 4th. I don't think that's going to happen. Like I said, I am leaning towards about 5.5% because that was the average. I'm leaning towards about 5.5% sell-off in 20 days because that was the average. So that's how we're getting about 4,000 on ES as a target by June 8th. And that's exactly what I have written down here for a DJT. I covered in previous videos, these purple rectangles are fair, fair value gaps on the four hour chart. And that's why I think those will be targets in the coming two weeks. Again, first target being 4080 at some point by the end of May. But my most likely scenario is just to sweep this recent low here because of HYG. So let's now go into HYG. I, I told you all about the DJT divergence. If you want to go take a look at that, I, I highly recommend you just go look at all the times that DJT was diverging from US 30. After, di 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 after the divergence completed, mark out how long did it take for the top to be found. And then once the top was found, how fast and aggressive was the sell-off? That's what I went and back tested over the past couple of years. And I saw a few, a few common themes. So I really think that we do have this high in now and we will start to rapidly fall achieving those targets as in first one being 40 60 to 40 80 at some point by the end of may and then down to about 40 20 or 4,000 by june 8th let's look at the next series of divergences with hyg hyg is essentially smart money's appetite for risk because these are high yield corporate bonds so when they tank before the s p 500 tanks it usually signals weakness and it signals a fast sell-off that's that's going to come once once high yield corporate bonds break down if s p 500 is still holding up eventually gets dragged down with it. It's kind of like a precursor to the sell-off. And these divergences, again, can last one week, they can last two weeks, they can last one month, they can last two months, and they've lasted two months. So I think that we are very close to breaking down now on S&P 500. Take a look at this divergence right here. Again, after back testing everything, it's very close to the same circumstance of the 2021 high that we just covered. So we'll go ahead and look at that with HYG in a moment. But let's look at this run the numbers. So basically from this high, March 31st, to where we are now, we fell 2%. So we fell 2% on HYG over those two and a half months. 
And on SPX, we went up from that, that 31st to there, two and a half percent. So up two and a half percent on SPX, but down 2% on HYG. Okay, so remember those numbers. Now here is the top that we had in 2021. So November 8th to January 4th, we sold off from the high to the top 1%. So we're down 1% on HYG, which is not down as much as the current situation. And we went up 2.4, 2.5%. So it's exactly the same, except the divergence is even more extreme right now. Again, this last time here, we went down 1% on HYG while going up 2.5% on SPX. Currently, we are down 2% on HYG while going up 2.5% on SPX over an, both of them over two month spans. Once the divergence plays out, we saw already how fast things drop, 5% in seven days, 12% in 20 days. Again, this is only one example, but I back tested multiple examples. Same goes with HYG. You can see as I scroll these lines, they're also HYG divergences. So both of these actually pan out to similar targets and we've really broken down on HYG and every time that breakdown happens within a few days we get that top and we start really breaking down very fast on S S P 500 so both of those divergences I just want to show you because they give me a lot of confidence that we are near top and we are very close to a rapid decline coming down to my targets that I have written here so you know if we go and break this high that we set on Friday I will be stopped out and I'll have to reassess but for now I'm holding short very close to being stopped out of course but we're gonna let it play out over the course of the next 10 to 14 days and see how everything plays out. Now, before wrapping this up, I know there's a lot of information. I need to cover the VIX with you, the dollar, and the put to call ratio. We're just gonna take a look at those few th few things and see if everything's lining up, everything's looking good with us to keep holding short. So on the VIX, last video I said, we, we were down here actually. I said this, this is a really big red bar, but I said, hey, it's okay still, as long as we don't take out this low at 15.5, then I'm gonna be looking for more upside. And we got the bounce on the VIX, came all the way up here. So this is awesome. We're putting in a higher low. I am expecting from here us to circle back up and head towards those low 20s, maybe even 22, 23, to get us down to 4,000 SPX. Because remember, volatility is inverse with the SP 500. When volatility goes up, SP 500 goes down. So now that we're near those bottoms and we're going to start pushing up, it looks good for our short to continue lower. So that is good on the VIX. Let's look at DXY now. On the dollar, we had a lot of strength. We went up rapidly. I said previously that I thought that this push up, once we get to 103, we'd be much lower on NASDAQ and S&P 500, but we kind of they kind of all rallied together. So that's one thing that threw me for a loop. That thing that, That's one thing that threw me off because typically when the dollar bottoms and breaks out, we see significant sell-off and a top on S&P 500. So I didn't, think us, I didn't think we would make another new high in S&P 500 after already pushing up and breaking out on the dollar here. So that was one thing that was concerning me. But it still looks good because, like I said previously, I don't want to see us come down and break this 101 area. If we just started dumping on the dollar and breaking through that area, you know, I wouldn't have as much confidence holding the shorts. reason why I have confidence holding short is because of multiple factors, because all these things. It's because the dollar is strong. It's because the VIX is bottomed and pushing up. It's because HYG is extremely weak. We have a very large, significant, extreme divergence has been playing out for a few months, and it doesn't really go it doesn't typically go longer than two months. So we're near the extremes there. DJT, exact same thing with the divergences, doesn't typically go longer than two months. And we're right there, we're at all extremes. So all these things that are playing out, there's a few other factors too that I don't talk about on the video because we don't have a lot of time to go through it all, but this all looks good. So the dollar, you know, we could pull back more, but just ex you know, expect it to keep really pushing up. It could actually target this 106 area. I know it's far right now, but yeah, it could we could target that 106 area and that, that could be what helps us get down to 4,000. And then I wanted to show you the put to call ratio. So fear and greed index put to call ratio, just to see where my mouse is here, we are very low. And when we're very low on the put to call ratio, it just means that a lot of people are holding long and there's not a lot of people holding short. So when there's a lot less shorts in the market, I like to use it as a contrary indicator because it's at extremes it can be where tops form. So when everyone is long and there's no one left to go long, that's when a top can form. Same thing goes with the bottom. When everyone has sold and there's no more sellers left, that's when we bottom. So basically when this put the call ratio is very low, when it's at in the 0.7s or the 0.8, it's it's a, it's a better risk reward to go short than long. And when it's above one, it's a much better risk reward to go long than short. One more, this is the put to call ratio in real time on a daily close. You'll see right where my mouse is here was 
May 18th, we closed right there at 0 0.8 on the put to call ratio. That was the lowest close all the way back to this February 2nd date. February 2nd was the only lower close on a daily basis on the put to call ratio. Do you know what happened February 2nd? February 2nd was the top and then we sold off very aggressively from there. So this basically shows we have as much people long right now as February 2nd on the close. That's what that currently means. And we have as little shorts as that time. And let's go, just for a history lesson, let's go look at what happened February 2nd and what happened after February 2nd. So again, we had that on the Thursday. So the Thursday just passed, that's when we had the lowest put to call ratio since the February 2nd high. This was February 2nd right here, where my mouse is. We hit 4,200, that's how we set that 4,209 high that I've been looking for us to sweep. And you can see what happened after that. That's gonna conclude this video. Thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Let me know in the comments down below what you wanna see more of. And look out for the next video coming out Wednesday night or Thursday morning. I'm all done from my vacation, all back full time. So I appreciate it, ready to get back on it. Charts all day. And thanks for all your support. I really do appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next video.